Hello from my old stomping grounds of Querétaro, Mexico. I'm here with my friend Jennifer, who's a little bit camera shy, so she won't be in this video. And we are, dare I say it, house hunting today. I'm looking for a house to buy. That's right, I've been looking for my long-term home base for quite a while now, and I think maybe it might be time to buy a house in a city that I once really loved and I spent a year here. Also, please stay tuned for later in the video where I will give an explanation on why I took a one-month hiatus from YouTube. This house I'm looking at is in Real del Jurquia, which is outside of the city. I would definitely need a car if I wanted to live here. It costs 3,450,000 pesos for a two-bed, two and a half bath house. So let's get right on into it. It unfortunately does not come with these adorable little Yorkies. Is this a Yorkie? No, what, what dog are you? I'm not sure what the breed is. But anyway, I'm starting in the backyard here. Has a very nice outdoor space. You can hear the birds chirping. I love it. Um, we're gonna walk by the wash area here. Small, but you know, basic what you would need. Walking right into the dining room and the kitchen. I do love the shape of it so you can kind of entertain and you have lots of counter space. It also has a surprisingly big pantry area. Then you have a living area here and on the other side of this little partition wall, another living area. So that's where they have the TV set up. And then actually I'm passing by the guest bathroom, the hall bathroom with the most adorable little sink. <laughs> Here's another view of this part of the house. I was also shown this door is extremely secure. Each one of these is a little bolt, if you can see that. And on the bottom here, even more so. I've never seen such a secure door. There's a little bit of construction going on on one side, but it's on what seems to be a relatively quiet, not super trafficked street, which is a nice feature. And then I'll show the smaller bedroom first. So this window looks out to the street here. Here's the closet area, and it has its own ensuite bathroom. So here we have a little on the small side. Uh, we can take a peek in here. You know, pretty standard bathroom. Are you gonna accompany me the whole way? Por favor, you are welcome. Tippy tappy, tippy tappy. <laughs> so walk back here. Oh, gotta mention this. There's a boveda ceiling, which is a very rare feature in Querétaro. I know I've seen a bunch of those in Ajijic, but for Querétaro, very rare. Here we have the master bedroom. So this is nice open, lots of light coming in, and you do have access to the backyard. They have it set up right now with the other doggy, the other puppy dog. Hi there, puppy dog. You're so cute. And they kind of have it partitioned. I was a little confused why, but maybe they just like to have this door open for the you know airflow and whatnot. You pass by the walk-in closet, and pretty similar to the other one, even similar in size, you have the bathroom. This house is on 300 square meters of land, and the house itself is 121 square meters. I think this is a reasonable size for one person if I'm gonna be living by myself. I do love that it has a yard so I could plant things and um, have like a garden out here, but then it's also just a nice space, especially with this covered area and a fan above. You can hang out and not get scorched in the sun and still enjoy the birds chirping and the breeze and the nature sounds. The big downside for me would be that it's in Hurikia, which you would definitely need a car because it's that far out of the city. And I do know in the one year that I lived in Querétaro, living in Hurikia, it can be difficult sometimes to get Ubers. They'll cancel one, two, three times. So a car would kind of be a must. If you're enjoying this video and wanna see more from me, be sure to hit that subscribe because I post a new video every week about my life and traveling in Mexico. Hey, you think this is a toy? You think it's a toy? It's a microphone. <laughs> He's like waiting for you to throw it. Oh, you're so cute. You're so cute. Yeah, he really thinks it's a toy. <laughs> Before I continue with the house tours, I think it's about time I explain why I took an entire month unexplainably off of YouTube. So about a month ago, I posted this update explaining that I was dealing with a funk due to the craziness of back-to-back -back trips and also dealing with some personal issues. The personal issues did include quite a bit, including things to do with friends, my health, and my love life. I would like to take this moment for us all to recognize that it has been a year since the breakup, so when I reference anything to do with my love life, it is going to be a news squeeze, nothing to do with anything or anybody in the past. Anyway, also during this month, I moved to a new city, where will be announced in an upcoming video, but once I got settled into my new apartment, I realized two very important things. 
One, I was burning myself out trying to release a new video every single week when with my previous channel, it was two of us working on it, splitting the workload. Given that I do the editing myself and I haven't outsourced any of the work because I can't afford it, like I said, I was just running myself into the ground, burning myself out, which is not sustainable long term. The other important thing that I realized is that during my five months living in Guadalajara, feeling super unsafe as a solo female, I was basically in fight or flight mode for a really long time and that taxed my body immensely so when I was finally able to breathe in a place that I felt safer a lot of health issues started coming up. So at about the two week mark, I decided it would be best for me to take a pause and give myself the time to recharge my batteries and only come back when I felt excited and motivated and completely ready to get back in front of the camera. During the rest of the time I've taken off, I've been making new friends in this city, I've been going to doctor's appointments to take care of my health, leaning into my spirituality and focusing on very intentional self-care. One of the most effective forms of self-care for me is taking a pause in my day with the all-in-one meditation and wellness app called Aura. Aura has thousands of meditations, stories, life coaching, and more created by hundreds of expert coaches and therapists around the world. I've been using this app for months now to calm my mind, reduce anxiety, improve sleep, and just overall be more clear-headed and healthy. The more I've used Aura, the more effective it's become because it actually uses billions of data points to personalize your entire experience. Other meditation apps I've used, I notice sort of take a cookie cutter approach, basically treating me like every other user on the app. So after a while of using those, I kind of get discouraged and stop meditating altogether because it just didn't feel like a good fit for me. On Aura though, I can find the best audio for that day. One of my recent favorites on Aura was a series on spirit guides, understanding what they are and connecting with them. I also often enjoy doing breathwork meditations while I'm stretching to combine both mental and physical health. If you want to improve your well-being, I highly recommend giving Aura a try. You can get started for free at AuraHealth.io slash MaddieGold22. The first 500 people who sign up using my link will get a free trial plus an exclusive 25% discount. So check it out using this link. You can also find it in the description below. So this house that I'm looking at is in the Millennial neighborhood of Querétaro. This particular house is a three bedroom, technically three bathrooms, and it's just under 3,000, no, 3,700,000 pesos. So let's take a look. I'm currently standing in what I would probably call a little living room den sort of deal. Here's the front door. You would walk in and you have this den area over here and another what I think would be kind of the dining room. Uh, right now, I, <laughs> I don't know what the heck with all of these chairs. There is as many chairs as you could ever possibly want. Makes me wonder if this was like a an office of some kind before, but it's definitely a house. So anyway, across from that is this kitchen area. There's no appliances here at the moment, but you here would put a stove, and then I believe right here you could put a rather large refrigerator if you want to. I was shocked to see that inside this pantry, do you see how deep this goes? This could be a bedroom for a guest that you really don't like. Just shove them in there. Just kidding. <laughs> I think if I were to buy this house, I would definitely put some more cabinetry above here because there's plenty of space for that. And then before I go upstairs, I want to show you that there's a guest bathroom right here. Then you can go outside. They have a little patio area here where you can barbecue over there. And just like most houses in Querétaro, you have a maid's quarters. It's a little bit messy. I noticed they have some stuff that's stored in here but enough for a single bed right here. And then it also has a shower, sink, and toilets. So this is gonna be for somebody to clean the house, watch your kids, maybe cook for you. And like I said, very common in Querétaro. I really have not seen this in other places. Also plenty of space here for your wash area, washer, dryer. Now let's take a peek upstairs. So like I said, there's three bedrooms, one, two, three. They all share this one bathroom up here. Um, I love this feature. They have this throughout the house, kind of like skylights with some beams going across. You can also see this above the stairs here. So first we have the master bedroom. 
Lots of natural light coming in. An interesting little shelf that comes across this wall. I don't really get the color choice, but you know, I didn't pick it. So from here, you can see out to the street. They're doing a little building over there that could be bothersome potentially, but from here you can see down that you would have some parking, some enclosed parking, lots of closet space. And then attached to this is another closet area, probably somewhere you could do some more storage if I wanted to add something like that. Interestingly, just one sink and, you know, standard shower, toilet over here, which is very tucked behind the door, but it is what it is. Come outside of this room, you have two bedrooms. I don't really understand the color choices that they picked. Wouldn't be my first choice. From here, you can look down, you can see a little bit of your neighbors and then the patio over there, plenty of closet space. And then going into the other bedroom, pretty similar. It just doesn't have that little shelf that goes across. I think this is the smallest of all the bedrooms. And again, you can look down here and see this patio and the maid's quarters. It also has its own closet space. So the Millennial neighborhood is a little outside of Queretaro. You would probably need a car or you would definitely be depending on Uber because there's no real way to walk from here to Centro or other neighborhoods. However, there are shops and um, some restaurants that are within the Millennial area. This home is 170 square meters and was built in 2015. So it's relatively new and it does seem to be well maintained. I didn't notice much damage throughout the house. Although I'm not really sure if I dig the fact that it's in the Millennial neighborhood. I prefer to be somewhere that's more walkable, but it is a nice option overall. So I am still here in the neighborhood of Queretaro called Millennial, and this house by comparison, I'm gonna tell you right off the bat, I like it a lot more. It is 3,500,000 pesos, and let me see, three bathroom, no, three bedrooms, three and a half bathrooms, so let's go check it out. First, I'm actually standing here in what is kind of an outside patio area, but it connects to a covered two-car garage it's right behind me with an electric gate. This house overall is much more spacious and and I just like the flow better. You come in and here is what I believe would be the first living room, family room area. There is a guest bathroom, hall bathroom here. Two levels, so I'll show you that in just a second, but you've got some storage underneath the stairs. This would be the dining room. You've got a little peephole. What would you even call this? Like a window through to the kitchen. So you could maybe put some bar stools here and then um, I do believe the stove would come with this house. They said that they're cleaning it right now could put a fridge right here and I don't know, maybe table and chairs, maybe an island, but of course I have here this, this space that could be used for the dining area. Even though it's the same build, uh, it's the same year that it was built, 2015, it's seven years old, just like the other house, I do feel like there's some interesting design elements that make it look more dated, like this green uh, plasticky countertop, I'm sure this has a name, um, even just the, the material of the wood here, so you know, um, just something for me to consider. This uh, patio terrace area is much smaller. Uh, it does also have a maid's quarters. This connects to the washroom where you put a washer dryer. And then here you have, where honestly, I don't even know how you would fit a single bed here, but apparently it does fit. You have your toilet, sink, and shower. Then from here, I'm gonna take us upstairs. So that's where I came in. Now we're gonna go upstairs. Tons of natural light come in through, the, through this skylight. And then we walk right up to another area that could be kind of like an entertainment room. Maybe you put a pool table here, couches, TV, something like that. So we have three bedrooms, uno, dos, tres. We'll go in this one first. It's very, very spacious. I can see out here to this park all along here, closet space here, also a walk-in closet. This is the master bedroom, I forgot to mention that. But like I said, there's some features that make me think that this is <laughs> much more dated. I actually kind of like this. It looks like a seashell, some type of glass, blown glass thing. Don't think I've ever seen a toilet seat cover that looks quite like this. <laughs> but you got a shower here. And in addition to overhead fans, Two of the bedrooms have AC units. That's pretty rare in Queretaro from what I've seen. Then we're gonna go into what I believe is the smallest of the bedrooms, but it's got a window that looks down to, you 
can barely see the patio. This concerns me a little bit to not know what could be built there at what time. But anyway, you have lots of closet space and a connected bathroom. Again, with this type of very unique toilet seat, I don't know. Then we're gonna go back out to this open area here to the third bedroom, which also has its own ensuite bathroom, an AC unit, and lots of closet space. The house in total is 264 square meters, and I do feel like overall it just has a much nicer flow with light coming in from all angles. I also can tell if you open the windows, you would get a good cross breeze if you didn't want to use those AC units, but I just think uh, this one I like a whole lot more. I would have to just consider, do I want to live in Millennial because it's not my favorite of all the neighborhoods in Querétaro. However, it is one of the newer, if I'm not mistaken, and it's uh, pretty quiet except for a chopper going overhead right at this exact moment. <laughs> This house I'm looking at is in the Tejeda neighborhood of Querétaro and it's going for 3,750,000 pesos. This is a three bedroom plus this space here, a two complete bathroom, two half bathroom, and I'll kind of explain what I'm talking about as I go through. So this is the house right here and then you also have this space which could be, currently it's the owner's workshop, so he's an artist. The reason he's even selling this is because, as you can probably see, uh, he's expanding in his art, actually opening a studio in Central very soon and he needs more room. So as much as they love the house, he's gotta sell it. It also has its own half bathroom, so you know, could be a multi-purpose area. So then we're gonna go in this house here. He still does have some, uh, some of his art out here, so this would be moved, that's actually the front door, but we're gonna go ahead inside the kitchen here. So here's the kitchen. Oh my gosh, I absolutely love this big island here. I love how they've stained the kind of like teal and natural wood, um, like shabby chic look of all these cabinets. This opens right up with some arches to the dining room area that you can see here. And he was telling me that these are special bricks. This is a special type of stone that actually retains the coolness. So in the summer months, you're not gonna be baking. Outside these doors, you also have a wash area and additional space outside. And this huge closet for more storage. I also love above, you can see these wooden beams from the kitchen. Dining room opens right up to the living room area and a unique feature here. I mean, there's actually a lot of unique features about this place, but you've got some vaulted ceilings up here, and this actually opens up to a bedroom up there. So it's just fascinating how this is all laid out. By the way, front door right here, that's where you would typically come in. And honestly, throughout this entire place, I love the different fixtures, like unique lighting here, these lights coming down and you know the family is still living here so that's why all their stuff is still here we're gonna go up some stairs here and man i just love these the shapes of the windows and the brickwork it does really give me this fusion between like a castle and a cottage and maybe a cabin all of them mixed together so first Coming into the master bedroom here. There's come some natural lighting on this side. You know, here's the master bedroom. Opens up to a window over here, which you can actually see the Pirámide de Querétaro in the area of town called Pueblito. This also has a ton of closet space, including <laughs> they designed like this. Spins around for all the shoes. It has its own ensuite bathroom. And you know, some natural light coming in from this window. Here's the shower. Then coming out of the master bedroom, there are two additional bedrooms. This is currently his daughter's room, one of his daughters. So again, lots of closet space. I think it would look a little more open when there's not a bunk bed here, but anyway, you come into a bathroom here with its own shower. And then if we go across the hall, the second bedroom, this is currently his teenage daughter's room. Got some shelving, um, much higher ceilings with those wooden beams, skylights for natural light, and this is what I was talking about from below, that it opens up here, and you can see right down. If there's one thing I'm not a huge fan of in this house, it's maybe the lighting. Some places can be a little bit dark. Overall, I think this is a really nice option for a house, and 
It's in a very, very quiet neighborhood, kind of away from any of the hustle and bustle of the city, so definitely something I would consider. And finally, I can't leave without mentioning that the house itself is about 220 square meters of construction on a much larger plot of land because where we are right now is kind of this cochera, this, uh, what do you call it? Freaking garage <laughs> or carport where you would park. Uh, and then you do have this yard here, which is nice. You, I could put some plants, or if I wanted to get a dog, I could do that as well. So I wanted to take a quick pause and say thank you to Monica, who is a longtime friend. Monica is actually the real estate agent that helped me find my home in Querétaro two years ago. Thank you so much for finding all these homes today and showing us, uh, taking us all around the city. It's been an amazing help. <laughs> You're welcome. It's been great to work with Buddy and get to meet you. So I'm grateful too. If you're looking for a house, or actually if you're interested in any of these houses, obviously Jennifer and I can't buy all of them. I will leave Monica's information down below in the description so you can contact her if you're interested in house hunting in Querétaro. I am now in the neighborhood called Arboledas, which is north of Alamos, a neighborhood I really like. And this is by far the most expensive house I'll be looking at today at 4,500,000 pesos. So let's see what we're looking at here. Before we head in the front door here, I wanna take a notice of this yard area. And there's also what's kind of like a clubhouse you might call it there's a half bathroom in here um, the family is still living in this house so they're having uh, the son is doing some type of a class in there so I can't enter but we can head right on in the front door do you allow it do you allow it senor see si? okay well they must enter vamos <laughs> So we walk right into the built-in living room area, so that means these couches are fixed. This is the dining room area, and like I said, the family's still living here, so throughout the house they still have all their belongings while they attempt to sell it and are still living here. Then we go over here to this bar top area, which connects to the kitchen. I'll be honest, after looking at the house, I feel like the kitchen is a little bit on the small side for the size of the house. However, it does have good flow, like you can walk right through it and walk here to the dining room. And this goes right through to a storage area, also the laundry room, and around the corner is the maid's quarters, which has its own half, half bathroom, full bathroom. It has its own bathroom. <laughs> and then if we go over here, I'm not gonna go outside to the backyard because they've got the most adorable little puppy dog. Do you see this? I like a little puppy dog, oh my gosh. <laughs> and I think that's a German Shepherd. But if you can tell, it has a huge yard back here, a big, beautiful yard that's all fenced in. And then let's continue on throughout the rest of the house. There are three bedrooms. Right here is a shared hall bathroom with, I believe you could use this as a bathtub. I'm not sure, maybe that's just the shape of it. Here is one bedroom. The second bedroom, which has access to the yard out here. Pretty spacious, as you can see, they actually do have two beds in here and quite a lot of closet space and finally the master bedroom so this one faces out to that front yard it's uh pretty spacious has a ton a ton a ton a ton of closet space and the reason it's the master is because it has its own bathroom connected so you got the shower in here a toilet tucked back there. To be perfectly honest, after looking at this one, I don't know that I would say it's worth 4.5 million pesos. However, you are getting the benefit of the location. It's very centrally located, a very prestigious neighborhood, very quiet. For me personally, I also do think it's a little bit too much house for one single person. However, I could have an army of wiener dogs running around in the backyard, so... That is a major benefit that I might consider. And even though I say this is the most expensive of all the houses that I've looked at today, compared to some other places that I've been in Mexico, uh, coming up I will be going to Ajijic and showing you some houses there. It's actually not too bad of a deal. Before I forget, the house itself is 250 square meters and the whole property is 485 square meters. Since I've only ever rented in Querétaro, I really didn't know what to expect today. One thing that surprised me a lot, many of the homes that I looked at had the family stuff still in them, so it kind of made it difficult for me to imagine what it would look like when it was all fully cleaned out. I'm definitely going to keep hunting and pondering the ones that I saw today because I did, of course, have one big favorite. Thank you so much for coming along with 
with me while I was house hunting here in Querétaro. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to see more. On the screen here is another video where I was house hunting in Mexico. If you want to see more of what the prices look like and the other options are across the country. And one more thing before you go. <laughs> Gong that bell so you get notified the next time I release a new video and I hope to see you there.